Can you hear us? Let me check really quick. Okay. <coughs> yes, I did. All right, I'll get all good. Yeah, all right. Are you ready, Dutch? Uh, let me make sure I get keys first. Are both judges ready? Thank you. 
whole region operating out many of the same bases. Diplomacy and re-engagement increases the demand for security contractors. This undermines diplomatic efforts and causes human rights abuses. Kusumano in 17 finds that the increasing deployment of foreign service officials in fragile environments has magnified the need to protect diplomatic premises. States have resorted, have resorted to private security companies as diplomatic protection. Unclear accountability mechanisms translated into abuses and human rights violations. The armed protection of foreign service undermined the effectiveness of the diplomatic activities, thus soaring, souring the relationship between the sending states and the local societies. The U.S. has been at the forefront of the privatization of armed security and has systematically relied on PSCS for the protection of U.S. diplomatic posts. The use of PSCS in countries with weak judicial law enforcement capacity may create accountability gaps. Contractors now account for roughly 90% of the workforce. Reform sparrows, macular 22 fund, despite, despite increased attention to the potential for negative gender impacts in the sector, companies have not developed gender responsive policies. Gender is not addressed in any meaningful way by PMCs. PMSCs have not yet shown the required holistic understanding of gender impacts. The impact is gender violence, as Meher on 14 quantifies that private security contractors employed by the U.S. government have been implicated in serious human rights violations, including human trafficking. We should be concerned about the lack of oversight and accountability that exists over PSCs. For all these reasons, please engage. Yeah, All right, I just have to hold you guys for that. Time will begin. Now, contention one is a Turkey and incursion in northeast Syria. The tensions in northeast Syria are escalating, but diplomacy is still possible. Al Dado 22 writes that Turkey has launched a barrage of airstrikes on suspected militant targets in northeast, northern Syria and Iraq in retaliation for a bombing in Istanbul that Ankara blames on the Kurdish group. If Turkey attacks any region, the war will spread to all regions. It will be possible to convince Turk partners to refrain from the use of military, uh, military forces in Syrian territory. Erdogan will attack soon, but U.S. diplomacy can still prevent it. Jeffrey 22 writes that Erdogan has previously threatened ground operations only to be dissuaded by Washington. Erdogan might be seeking to uh, intimidate the PKK from launching attacks before the election. Indeed, the U.S. is uniquely positioned to prevent this. Hoffman 19 writes that the United States has significant leverage with Turkey, whose military security is largely dependent on Western allies. The United States can still clear red lines and credible response to deter further Turk escalation. The United States should engage in firm transactionalism with Turkey to uh, slow down escalatory cycles. Three-way talks solved. And Jeffrey continues that U.S. officials could build three-way Turkey U.S. SDF agreements to a real offer. Washington should revitalize their commitments to the SDF to withdraw from Menjab and Kobani in return for a Turk promise not to move against the Northeast. And the impact is an Iranian conflict. As EZ-22 writes that if Turkey decides to carry out its planned attacks in northern Syria, Iran will resort to military response to be a proxy force if the situation gets fired out of control and lead to a broader and longer-term conflict between the two. This causes math deaths. Avery-20 writes that if an attack on Iran would escalate into a large-scale war, Pakistan might enter the war on the side of Iran, introducing nuclear weapons either intentionally or by acts or miscalculation, while making large areas of the world uninhabitable a global family result. Contention 2 is Yemen. Diplomacy has broken down and conflict is imminent. Evans 21 continues that war is coming, preparation is happening. Both parties have reported new fortification and troop reinforcements for front lines. Both have been frustrated by the implementation of the deal. Recent attacks prove. Al Asar 22 writes that last month, Houthi militia was launched a drone attack against the Dhabi oil terminal. This will be third strike in the past two months. The, tr the threat of further attacks on oil ports and military targets remain high. Despite US involvement, we haven't engaged with a diplomatic toolbox. Remember 21 writes that America needs to step on diplomatic efforts by using its leverage with parties to the conflict. Fortunately, US diplomatic efforts can create long term peace by empowering trusted regional actors. Oman is Kiel. Hershey Triumph writes that Oman is one of the few countries in the region that maintains constructive ties on all sides. Oman has generally made a point of remaining neutral in many of the West Asian disputes. An increased Jewish involvement can empower Oman as a mediator. Star 22 writes that increased Jewish diplomatic attention has refrained Oman's mediation in efforts. Oman gains seriously involved in the final agreement of successful negotiations. Oman for correspondent 21 writes that Oman influence on the Kuwaitis many of different results given the vital services Oman offers to the Kuwaitis as the ability to exert more pressure on demand concessions. The impact of stopping conflicts is manifest that Borneo continues to 20, 30, 1.3 million people will die. 
Contention three is the GO Cooperation Council or GCC. The GCC has on micro support. Grand 22 finds that traditional partners in the G, uh, Gulf reinforcing the aspect system regarding the United States' new multipolar uh, reality characterizing the extended influence of China and Russia has pushed major GCC states. Grand Times further that relations with the GCC have been compounded by a failure to engage in open dialogue. This an arms race is brewing in West Asia. Dorsey 20 writes that the recent U.S. military pullback from Saudi Arabia will fuel brewing arms race in West Asia on the heels of successful launch on uh, of Iran's first military reconnaissance satellite. The risk of arms race West Asia has been explicit at MBS warnings. This is why Farrington continues that the change demands a U.S. military strategy built on an open and honest dialogue. The United States should move to promote greater regional cooperation and avoid inter GCC conflicts. Luckily, increased diplomatic engagement in regional conflicts bolstered regional organizations. Farrington 22 continues that diplomatic engagement is the foundation on which successful cooperation and defense security cooperation build on without more. Diplomacy, U.S. policymakers will suffer the kinds of political shocks they have uh, upended regional relationships. Only the GCC can provide an arms race. No, 09. Right, that the GCC should serve as a vehicle to coordinate arms purchases by member states rather than relying on uncoordinated bilateral arm agreements. Furthering that cooperation in the economic sector should develop such an agreement would encourage cooperation rather than confrontation. The impact of war. Gilmore 05 writes that the arms race creates instability. This is really what causes disputes as one rival theory is the overtaking of another uncertainty over capability changes, specifically in West Asia. Toronto 18 writes that a regional conflict is not broken out. In West Asia, yet, but the conditions exist for make it possible for reinvigorated arms race. And beyond that, millions will die in the eventual war in the Gulf. Avery 20 writes that in an attack of what is estimated to a large scale war, Pakistan might enter introducing nuclear weapons. Russia and China might also be joined to general war in West Asia, either intentionally by action of population, making large areas of the world and have a global hammer and soul. You're good for cross. Yep. All right. <coughs> Let's look at your. Um, Let's look at your C1. This could be your unique evidence is from 2022. Then your link evidence that like the US's position to prevent this is from 2019. This yeah. has been three years for your own unique evidence. Why are tensions still escalating? The reason why I tell you like tensions are escalating is because of the specific bombing that they're blaming on the Kurdish group. And we've seen in the past, like our links talking about in the past, how we have leverage over Turkey and we can stop this like we did in the past. But I mean, your evidence is from 2019, and yeah. it literally says the United States has significant leverage. Like they'll be able to stop, yeah. like Turkey. Why haven't they stopped Turkey? And literally, in so far as your own, like, okay. own uniqueness evidence, finds Turkey hasn't has done problem. anything yet. The problem is the new conflict is escalating because of the bombing in Ankara. Um, on your argument about pandemics, sure. So, like, why is the West Asia specifics like helping pandemically? Like, what? Yeah. So we say that when the U.S. is in the region, we see less GCC cooperation. We said GCC cooperation is key to solve for pandemics because we have already seen, like, during COVID, towards the end, when GCC, when like GCC countries started cooperating, we saw like an increase in pandemic response. We saw an increase in like food chains being like solved for. So we've already seen, like, empirically, that when the GCC is cooperating, we solve for pandemics. So better. your impact is preventing spread of disease in specifically West Asia. It's it's mitigating the effect of pandemics specifically for women. Okay, I'll take a question. Um, on your C2 on Yemen, so like your link is that like US involvement is like good for Oman, Oman is key to solve the conflict. Your evidence says that diplomacy is already being used on Oman. Why should we affirm? Diplomacy is already being which part like, of it? Like it literally says increased US diplomatic attention has. Yeah, that's Oman true. So that was, that was before, that is, that is old evidence. Like that's not right. Old evidence from the increased US, yeah, Hold increased up. US diplomatic attention has Hold reinforced up. Oman's mediation. Yeah, yeah exactly. Past. So it literally already says that there's already been an increase no, 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 in no. US diplomatic attention that yeah. has already reinforced Oman. First off, why, why does the judge affirm if it's already happening? Because first stuff? off, A, more diplomacy makes them go into it further. Second off, it's not like, where, where does it say that? Increased U.S. diplomatic attention reinforces Oman. No, and, no, that's not what it says. It says it has reinforced. Yeah, Oman's so continued U.S. diplomatic attention will reinforce Oman's mediation efforts even more. It doesn't say that. It says that when we've had diplomacy, which was December yeah. 6, it already. It's like a cause and it's, it gives you a cause and effect relationship. So you continue adding more to the cause, it will add more to the. Effect. You don't give us any evidence that says increased diplomacy solved. Yes, I've been saying that increased diplomacy has already. Solved. Yeah, no, it hasn't already solved because Oman's I mean, not fully mediating the conflict yet. And that means diplomacy doesn't work because you're no increased like diplomacy. diplomacy already the happened. problem is we don't have enough diplomatic like, attention in the region. If right increased right. diplomacy works, it should be working. Your no, own evidence says because we have increased US diplomacy, diplomacy happening on the side. It literally says increased US diplomacy, diplomacy happening on diplomacy. the diplomacy. We just like okay. put in like a person to go into Yemen and be like an ambassador, but that's and not like that actual means, diplomacy. That's like I mean, then that means that like you're, you don't have link evidence. No, that's not what it means. I mean, it means that more diplomacy increased Oman's mediation efforts. Kind of question, but that's not the evidence that's true. Yeah, I guess just like ten seconds. That was six seconds. Yeah, no, no. 
Oh, do you want me to send a doc before? I probably will skip a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's all good. All right. I'll just send whatever you need. Where do you say his name? Let me say. We're doing rebuttals. Okay. We'll just be down there. Everyone good? In. Now, from their C1 about their key, a few issues. First, there are two first two pieces of link evidence do not mention diplomacy at all. It says that things like U.S. security ties have rented in Turkish invasion in the past. A, notification as to why we don't have security ties with Erdogan now. It's not unique. But B, we do have ties and they're just failing, which means their argument isn't true. Second, Turkey have used threats as terrorists. They will conduct, uh, conduct operations inevitably as Kanoka 20 finds that Erdogan called on NATO allies to ban the Turkish militia terrorists. We will stand against any step that will be taken there. Turkey feels like can claim NATO uh, did not have Turkey's security interests and NATO does not feel anything for Turkey. A third, U.S. Turkey diplomacy would be the first fail as Sultan from last, uh, yeah, last year writes that U.S. efforts to ease tensions between Turkey and Kurdish fighters appear to have little effect. Both sides are refusing to back down. They have been in a constant contact with Turkey and Kurdish-led forces to no avail. We have seen no signs of de-escalation. Or the electoral politics means Erdogan will inevitably target the Kurds as O'Brien from December finds that Turkey could launch a full-scale military operation approach from a domestic angle. This invasion makes a lot of sense. They are facing a presidential and parliamentary election in June 2023 that they could lose, which means they have the incentive to invade even if we increase diplomacy. On the impact, it just says that an invasion might lead to a prolonged conflict. There's no evidence that says that there's an actual strike on Iran. The next piece of evidence isn't even talking about Turkey. They're skipping massive lines of logic. It'll never happen because of mutually assured destruction. On Yemen. First, there are evidences that it's already increasing, uh, that the US is already increasing engagement literally from December 6th. That's not unique. There's zero implications why slightly increasing a few diplomats on the ground will tip the scales. It's failing now, which means it always will. Secondly, who these will block any peace negotiations in Yemen as first thing 22 points that essential predicate is unattainable, uh, unattainable again uh, unless the Houthis participate, that they need to be a part of that process. The Houthis have persistent political negotiations that have not abandoned their maximalist demands. Neither the UN nor the United States has identified the means to impel a challenge, uh, change in the Houthi position. Third, Iranian influence wraps Yemen peace process as current scene 22 points that there's no evidence that Iran has been willing to use its influence with the Houthis to encourage their participation. Iran increased its illicit weapon supplies to the Houthis to enable more lethal attacks on Yemen. The Houthis showed a sign of misreading Biden's intentions. This means that even if we increase diplomacy, Iran will non-unique instability in the region because they always have the incentive to do things like arms sales. Fourth, peace negotiations and always fail in Yemen. As Robinson 20 finds that the UN failed to bring an end to the conflict, the sign of their increasing alignment with the Iranian regime could motivate Saudi Arabia to further increase its commitment to the proxy conflict. Analysts are skeptical that the deal will hold despite uh, drawdown, renewed violence, and generate broad territorial gains for the Houthis. Fifth, you can turn it. Ending operations in Yemen causes a violent Houthi turnover. As a Yaka 18 finds that calls to stop the Yemen war, misguided disengagement would have the calamitous consequences for Yemen. The Houthis inflicted a massive civilian casualties. Saudi Arabia military intervened, seeking to restore Yemen's legitimate government. If the Saudi led coalition were to cease operations, the Houthis would march on coalition, uh, coalition liberated areas and exact a bloody toll. The rebels have rules on not kidnapping, executing, and torturing civilians. Go to regional cooperation. First, cross applying the uniqueness evidence from our case, which is from 2022. It's a mod which is really good in saying that current US disengagement from West Asia has shifted regional politics. US diplomacy isn't taken seriously by countries in the region, which is why the vacuum allows for regional solutions and normalizing relations, which is why we're seeing a healthy path toward things like pandemic cooperation. Even if they get up there and say that negotiations are failing, we would say that because the US has started to disengage recently, it's going to get way, way better in the future. The uniqueness is not on their side. But secondly, it fails for a few reasons. A is GCC leadership. They'll fill in for the US as uh, Business Standard 21 points for the retreat from Afghanistan, perceived disengagement from West Asia to reassess the positions and mend relations with rivals. This resulted in increased prospects for stability in the Gulf. Much more attention from the U.S. policies now given to China, Russia, and the Far East. But B is free riding. U.S. efforts are the primary barrier to regional cooperation by killing the incentive. A, a stop 25 that Trump may be doing a far better job in working with allies to, and regional partners to ensure the goal. The U.S. efforts to involve friendly powers have intensified, with the U.S. relaxing its grip. The opportunity for a multilateral security architecture is now called. Possible. Third is diplomacy. Withdrawal is forcing cooperation even amongst autocrats as Gamble 21 finds that after years of looking at broad countries from the Middle East and West Asia appear to be talking to each other to find solutions, American withdrawal in Iraq have played a part in that change. Thus, okay. the Yeah. 
Yeah, where's the damage? Uh, it's, it's the last response on here. It's the one it's that says. Oh, yeah, 18. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's numbered as five. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. We're just going to be frontlining in their case. I'm good. On Turkey, the first response that deployed well, our evidence is a mention of diplomacy. Yes, it does. The Jeffrey evidence indicates that we utilize three way talks with Turkey, the US, and SBF to solve the conflict. But secondly, it considers the US's unique leverage to diplomacy that takes away sanctions and uh, withdrawing military support would stop the conflict. Their second response that conflict is inevitable because they view the Kurds as terrorists. A, their evidence is not saying that. It just says that they view the Kurds as terrorists, not that they're not willing to negotiate about which will our Jeffrey evidence indicates that empirically talks of work before you mediate the conflict. Their third response that efforts have failed. That's unique for us. We say that because we're not utilizing any of our actual diplomatic leverage, like things like sanctions that they Often evidence of deploying military support, the conflict is going to happen in status quo. Their next response is that uh, 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 election politics make the war inevitable. No, it would cost them way more than it would gain because if Turkey was hit with sanctions or if they pulled out military support, then it would hurt them way more than it helped with the election. Their final response is that uh, it's not our impact evidence isn't talking about a prolonged conflict. Our impact says that Iran would be prepared to stop the Turkey invasion of northern Syria and Iran. Their last thing is just mad deterrence, literally not a warrant for that rebuttal. Don't let them load up in that count. Uh, go to C2. We'll concede the defense that kicks out of the turn on their trip specifically. It's talking about a Saudi pullout. There's no warrant for why this happens. Go to GCC. 
on unique and small response in their case, on their first turnabout leadership, AR evidence indicates that just because we're like focused somewhat on China and Russia, it doesn't mean that we can't actually have a leadership position engaged with the GCC. BR evidence indicates that if we were like going to do the affirmative, we could actually like re-engage more inside of the region. So leadership doesn't matter. On their second turnabout, free riding will respond to on their case. It's the same exact word as Astra. On the third turnabout, uh, diplomacy forcing cooperation with authoritarian leaders. A, their evidence is talking about military intervention. It's not talking about diplomacy at all, call it, but B, it's talking specifically about Iraq. They don't analyze that generally at that point, you know, that our unique scenario is conceded that an arms race is brewing in the status quo and purely for the currency to have its diplomatic efforts that help to create honest, open dialogue and solve regional conflict. Go to there. Uh, wait, that's wrong. Uh, yeah. On uniqueness, one, there's no cooperation happening right now. All they say is that some country's trying to bury the hatchet. Oh, uh, wait, no, wrong thing. Uh, on the yeah, no right thing. One, they're burying the hatchet. We say proof of concept is an arms race brewing in the Middle East right now. That's Dorsey 22. The uniqueness overwhelms the weight. Their evidence concedes that countries are willing to put aside their petty differences to cooperate specifically on pandemics. At that point, even if US first dialogue, it doesn't matter because they still do cooperation on pandemics specifically. One, they don't read any uniqueness saying that pandemics can start in the Middle East. At that point, you feel that any pandemic hitting having uh, anywhere else in the world triggers their same scenario, but see the GCC independently does pandemic cooperation, the warrant is domestic consensus. Uh, these countries that make money by sending pandemic resources cross border because it makes them a lot of money. They don't care about diplomacy when, because they want to increase diplomacy by uh, revenue by selling vaccines. Second, the pandemics are a thing in the past. Carol 21 starts with a global barone project, a global, uh, a global viral surveillance network is solving, making more efficient and detecting early virus spread. On reversing progress, one, the U.S. pressures countries to diplomacy. Even if they win at the U.S. in the area, we're still forced countries to bandwagon in the face of threats through things like threatening to cut off assistance and sanctions. At that point, you know the U.S. being inside the region doesn't cut off regional dialogue. Second, U.S. dialogue spills over this independent means that countries go to regional dialogue sold but 20 contextualizes that even a failed template could offer uh, templates for future enforceable arrangements such as an effort would fill a major diplomatic void. Uh, go to C2. One, trafficking is rising the status quo. Their impact occurs in both words. Statistical warns that between 2008 and 2019, the number of human traffic victims worldwide quadrupled. Second, the U.S. is repositioning troops not withdrawing. Uh, we warned that after Afghanistan, by simply removed U.S. troops from the Middle East to East Asian positions to counter China and North Korea, like sold to implications. A, the uniqueness is wrong. There's no offshore B, and if the link happens, these troops just come from other locations and there's no U.S. deployments, you can turn it. Diplomacy, uh, diplomacy trades off with the military. A is a policy check. Goldenberg and Al-21 writes that a greater emphasis on diplomacy will help the U.S. to demilitarize its approach to the Middle Eastern countries. But second, is spending the state and defense department's budget are inversely proportional spending on one cause the other to drop diplomatic efforts in the Middle East are extremely costly through the goody bags and incentives to get parties on board. At that point, to reduce the trapping for their length because historically cuts in military budgets that responded to uh, reduced war deployments. On their argument specifically of PNC, it's one, there's sermon evidence is analyzing counter-terror operations, not general diplomacy. Two, diplomatic security already exists in these locations. Adding more diplomats wouldn't change anything. Three, diplomatic security is temporary. We say the most diplomatic security is only on the ground one to two years, which isn't enough to trigger their uh, unique scenario. We're talking about interchange. Yeah, I'll cut up.
policy correct. What's the other name for like the US repositioning? Oh, uh, so analytic. That was wonderful. I used two minutes exactly. Are you good for props? Yeah. Um, all right, can I get the first question? <coughs> okay, on your C1, about like, let's talk about the impact on C1, right? The Azizi evidence just says, like, if Turkey decides to invade, the situation could spiral out of control and lead to a long term conflict. The next piece of evidence just says a strike on Iran may cause a nuclear war. Yeah. Where is the warrant as to why like Turkey decides to strike Iran in the first place? So we say that if Iran is prepared to stop Turkey, Turkey in uh, northern Syria with Iran, at that point they're already in a war, which is the warrant that it's easy Wait, to get. Th th like none of that is in your evidence. Your evidence literally yes, says the situation could spiral out of control and lead to a broader long-term conflict. Okay. No if evidence Turkey has decide, Okay, let me read this verbatim because you're misconstruing it. If Turkey I mean, decides to carry out its plan to attack northern right. Syria, or resort, uh, Iran will resort to military response to the yeah, proxy forces. forces. How is that a military strike on Tur Turkey? Or how that the just situation could spiral out of control and lead to a broader and longer term conflict between, between the two. Between the two. Neighbors. No evidence, like your impact, your your this causes mass, mass death impact is reliant on like a first strike on Iran or Turkey. No, no evidence. Yes, it literally says an attack on Iran would escalate okay. into large. Let me throw this up to make this simple. The Azizi evidence indicates that. If Turkey decides to go into northern Syria, Iran would be forced to respond. It would spiral out of control into them going into war. The Avery evidence indicates that that war would escalate into a larger scale war where countries like Pakistan and China would enter on each side. I'm gonna take a sure. look. Let's talk about let's talk about trafficking. Yeah. So your impact evidence tells me that uh, they're 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 prosecuting PMCs in the status quo. It literally says, "quote Perhaps justice is on its way." No, no, no. So our evidence finds that even if, for example, we announce things like reforms, because the places in which PSCs are located have a lack of judicial review empirically, it yeah. always fails. But then your mera evidence literally below says that perhaps justice is on its way right. because Th that's they're instituting new they policies. They always say like justice is on its way. We're implementing new policies, and historically, literally every time they do that, it fails because there's no way to regulate PMCs. Or no judicial review. But your Mera evidence says that they're and, literally and, regulating PMCs right now. And it's failing. That's that's our whole argument. And none of that was in rebuttal, so I don't think it's relevant. Can I get a question? Sure, go for it. Okay. Um, on regionalism. Like GCC. Yeah, GCC. Um, so specifically, when like when's this arms sales or arms race evidence from? Uh, 2021. Okay, so if we win that, like even if there was an arms race. Cooperation is I mean, the arms race starting, is right, right, right. But if, if we win that cooperation, it's happening now and it's getting better in the future. Wouldn't the arms race probably decrease? No, it doesn't matter because you have to, because even so far as it's been two years, you have to win a reason why uh, dialogue happening in the status quo is not enough to resolve the arms race. That's fairly. Do, do you have another question? And also, I read an analysis of uniqueness. I responded to that on your case by saying it's literally all just talks and not doing any actual concrete action, which is key to resolve the take on it. Arms race. That's, that's fine. Um, okay. Thousand and twenty-five minutes to twenty-five. So yeah, it's going to be my case there. So the wait, we'll be at the end. <coughs> wait, uh, at the end of your case, or like at the end? At the end of, of, the end of, of my speech. All right. All right. We'll just go. All right. 
on pandemics, we'll concede that there's no unique set of pandemics starts in the Middle East. That means I know that it turns matter. I'll respond to like all the GCC stuff on their case. On tracking, this is where we're winning the round really cleanly. Lawrence Country finds that the U.S. is decreasing military presence in West Asia. Salmon 21 finds that U.S. of only see is tied to hard power military presence. Kusmano 17 finds that re-engagement increases the demand for security contractors as foreign service deployments require armed protection. This undermines diplomatic efforts. Mac 22 finds that despite efforts, security contractors have not addressed gender violence concerns. And Mac 14 concludes that security contractors commit human right abuses, including human trafficking. They read six responses first to see that trafficking is increasing the status quo. One, the U.S. just started pulling out. We say that's decreased. But second, we say, if anything, it only gets so much worse in the world. If we have more diplomats, we see an increase in trafficking. But even if it's high right now, it gets a lot higher in the world. We see a lot more gender violence. Then they say that the U.S. is expanding and relocating. They literally have no evidence. We don't know where they're expanding. We don't know where they're relocating. They don't, we don't even know if it's true. They just say it's happening. Then they say that they read a turn of, like, diplomacy trades off with the military. One, no, it doesn't because our F finds that, like, uh, we still use military and that everything that says that like diplomacy means you don't use military is just hopeful thinking, hopeful thinking. But second, we say that when you increase diplomats, we still need uh, like private security contractors to protect them. That's what our argument is. Then they say like our evidence about counter No, our evidence, our Kusmano evidence specifically is not about counter terror finds that 90% of the sector are contractors. Then they saying that adding more diplomats doesn't change anything. Yes, it does. We say that lack of oversight causes an increase in trafficking because there are more PSCs. When there are more PSCs, that means that more trafficking happens inevitably because there's no oversight to stop them from uh, like uh, causing peace. Then they say that um, diplomatic security force is temporary. One, they give you no evidence, but two, even if it is temporary, they say like it, they're there for one to two years, so there's still a large increase in human trafficking for, for one to two years. That's really, really bad. On their case, let's start on Turkey. A couple problems here. First is our response to that, that Turkey views uh, Kurds as terrorists. They say that our evidence doesn't say that. Yes, it does. Our evidence literally, and I quote says, Erdogan called the Kurds terrorists. Like, if he sees them as terrorists, he's always going to keep wanting to invade them because he doesn't want the terrorists to invade his country. But second, we say that electoral politics means Erdogan is always going to invade. They just say that um, that he's not going to do that because he has nothing to gain. Yes, he does. He's literally projected to lose the election right now, which is prior die for him. He has nothing to lose by invading. That's why he's going to do it now. On the impact, literally read the evidence. It's so bad. They don't even talk about a first strike. They have no link into nuclear war whatsoever. On GCC, they're most likely not uh, winning here. They completely concede. Maria's first response is that U.S.'s engagement is already causing an increase in GCC cooperation. That's what we've already seen countries like Israel, Egypt, Lebanon already cooperating. The uniqueness is on our side. We've seen so many GCC countries cooperating right now just because U.S. isn't in the region. But even then, our evidence finds that burying the hatchet is happening right now. That's really good because when the U.S. is in the region and we bury the hatchet, that means that arms racing doesn't happen because the GCC countries don't see the other countries as a threat, which means that they don't have to proliferate. On the way, we say there's always intervening actors for things like war in West Asia because literally every country has an incentive to prevent war and policymakers always prioritize magnitude. Human trafficking is an invisible form of structural violence that has no judicial review because of its location. You should prioritize gender violence on your ballot. If they try to link in, it's still through the lens of war, which is always looked at by policymakers and you must reject it. Really quickly on C2, we'll extend the turn. That ending operations, gambling causes Houthi takeover, that's really bad. We see more kidnapping. They just say that there's no warning for Saudi pullout. Our evidence is about Saudi pullout. It's about us pulling out from Saudi. We say it's just really bad. Wait on how we we're seeing the Houthis doing this right now. Is there evidence read for the way? No, it's like cross apps of the warrant for the case. About like no judicial review, et cetera. Okay. No oversight. Yeah. 
we go by our, our case, one their case. Is everyone ready? We're good. Okay. Time will begin. Now, on our first contention, we'll concede the fact that Turkey, uh, Turkey, Turkey have reviews the Kurds of terrorists and what happened. Down there, uh, down there, turn about Saudi pull out. Yes, their evidence literally says in the next line that they don't highlight the Saudi pull would allow the Houthis to enable and go into other places. We never say that Saudi's going to pull We say that the diplomatic talks will stop Saudi and Houthi attacks. Then go to our argument about GCC, which is winning us the round. The prayer scene that finds that the expanded influence of China and Russia is weak in the GCC in relations that failed due to a lack of open dialogue. First, he finds that arms is currently brewing in the West Asia between Saudi Arabia and Iran and increased Jewish diplomatic efforts to solve the GCC by opening up, creating Open, honest dialogue. France continues that increased diplomatic engagement and regional conflict helps regional organizations have dialogue and notifies that only the GCC can run an arms race to coordinate arms agreements. No continues that economic cooperation is key to armed cooperation. The impact is war. Gilbert finds that arms race can see, uh, creates instability and encourages conflict. Toronto finds that the conditions for arms are currently present. And Edgar finds that Pakistan, China, and Russia will get involved in this calculation causing uh, global famine. They read two responses, which are just the same thing. They keep on saying that U.S. engagement has increased cooperation in the GCC and that they're bearing the hatch right now. These are just words on a paper. There's no actual action. They can see the fact that there's no talks. There's no, like, uh, they can see the fact that the talks have not led to any actual policy shifts or any diplomatic engagement with countries saying that we will help them help you. What we would tell you is that all these are just, uh, all these are just talks and propaganda being, like, perpetuated to try and make the region not seem that bad. That, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, go to the Wang. They don't tell you like what the intervening actors are not like. There are no intervening actors for the arms race insofar as no one's solving for it. They don't say that it's not working. Then we link in GCC cooperation. We can solve that for normal human trafficking uh, inside the region by having cooperation between these countries. We can help the smuggling across borders of human trafficking, which independently links to their argument. That also will outweigh them on scope later, and we'll explain why. Um, yeah, cooperation is the only thing that can stop trafficking because you need to have a cooperated accord across the different regions in order to stop inter any, any interstate uh, uh, trafficking. Uh, then go to their case. They say there are no. Uh, they say no Lincolns. It was this was literally over time. If we win the solve this, it triggers trafficking on a large scale for, for us. Um, on on okay. Go to their responses on their argument about trafficking. First off, they completely drop the fact that the repositioning happens. We tell you that whenever the United States pulled out troops from region, they re put those troops into other places like China. They say that we don't have any evidence, but they can see the warranting that historically when we've gone into Afghanistan, and Iraq, we've gone into uh, West. Asia, East, East, East Asia, and we try to prevent a Chinese uh, uh, increase. Then go to the turn on trade off policy. We tell you that whenever the United States increases uh, policy making, they shift away from military exercise. That's very, that's that's completely dropped. All they try and say is like, there's going to be private diplomatic security, but they don't explain, they don't understand the fact that if we increase diplomacy inside West Asia, then we decrease actual military efforts in other countries that will perpetuate tracking in those other regions, which means that the only increase that they're trying to solve for is a small amount of private security, which we would tell you that doesn't last that long. It's only for a couple of years, whereas they're still perpetuating the violence of military violence in other regions of the world, which means that they don't actually solve for tracking. Best we solve for trafficking outside of the United States, we also solve best through, through the GCC. Weighing, if you, uh, yeah, our evidence indicates arms race will trigger long comps, which will increase, increase instability and tracking two ways. A, during time to comp, there's more boots on the ground, which controls their length, but uh, they got a bigger scope because there's just a couple double packs. Uh, wait, really quick. Was there evidence on wings? Um, For which way? Uh, oh, and uh, the last part specifically, I think, that our evidence indicates. No, 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 just any way. Arms race is for long conflict. Sorry. Was any of the way you carded? The okay. weighing that they cause long conflicts was carded. The oh, okay. analysis also that is during conflict. So it's like analytics during conflict. What? The, the arms race conflict. causes long conflict. Does any of you run on the weight? Arms race causes. Yeah, that's just like the impact. <laughs> <clears throat> it's just sort of texting around. Yeah. So which part says the prolonged conflict? <clears throat> um, it's the, so the Gibbler says instability plus disputes, which was one fearing to take over another. And then the second card says that an attack would escalate to large yeah, number cards. I think I might have yeah. Got uh, Avery's. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Avery's not. Actually. I just got one. It's the same card. It's, it's oh, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see. I see. Yep. Wait, so where did it, I, I don't see where it says prolonged conflict. Uh, would escalate into a large network. 
that's that's not that's not the one. 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 Okay. All right. How is the no link in over time if I really finish my way with 10 seconds left and then go on to the turn on seat? Yeah, but your response to no link in was over time. What? The last thing you read was the extending turn. the turn. Right, like the I, way I, read my, read I read my way. I read my way. I have ten seconds left, so I go to the turn on C two. So I'm a little confused on how that was. Uh, I mean, I had a little bit of time. Okay, <laughs> you can go. Okay. Um, on your argument about what's wrapping. Um, in so far as like, okay, so if we trade off military for diplomacy and we increase diplomacy inside. West Asia, doesn't that decrease the military? So that, that's extended through ink at every speech. Our Strymon evidence from case literally pre like preempts this and says that diplomacy is tied to hard power, to military hard power. And anything that says that like we can cause a trade off is wishful thinking and empirically right. is false. Like you just extend it through ink. Right. So our, our evidence, which goes conceded, literally says like word for word, saying that diplomacy decreases military hard power is all wishful thinking. Yeah. Isn't our turn in here? Your turn is an analytic. Is it? Yeah. No, no, the analytic was on the reposition. Yeah, that, that, that's no, that, that's what gets you responses. The, the, Our the, policy trade off is Goldenberg at out 21. The reposition is analytics. Yeah, but the thing that wins you the turn, the, the, the thing that wins you the turn is the repositioning. No, because you no, no, say, no, no, no. The thing that wins us the turn is the trade off. So, okay, it's so it's what, military what's the trade off for diplomacy. It's the Goldenberg at out 21. The Goldenberg. Go ahead. This is not said there, the, there's a trade off. Yeah, it just says things like de-escalation. That does not say that we pull out troops. Okay, yeah, you can get <laughs> Yeah, we just have that question. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll take a question, I guess. So you say that the U.S. is repositioning. You say you have like empirics, where like you don't have evidence. So how do you? What we did during that yeah. Like, where's the evidence? I'm just like empirics. I can general truth. I mean, I can grab you like GPT files if you want, but like, just genuine, genuinely intuitive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, why, wait, why, why, what was the war behind the Lincolns? Uh, no Lincolns, because we say that policymakers like, always- Like, even if you try to say, like, war causes trafficking, our analysis is that policymakers always have an incentive to solve for war, which is why we should look at structural violence directly. Okay. Through the so, like, if I were to Lincoln through- So, so we say that- The first Lincoln works, though. The yeah, yeah, Lincoln, the, the okay. cooperation thing is fine. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Uh, you can we ask, ask no, a question? Yeah. All right, let's see. On, have we seen these countries arms race in the past? Oh, yeah. no. What, what's the incentive to them arms racing? Like, what uh, security. security? Like, they all feel security. Right. So, so if, they're burying, if they're burying the hatch with each other in the status quo and they no longer see each other as threats, our evidence, like, when you, when you talk about our evidence saying, oh, it's all like hopeful perception, that's exactly what your evidence is. Your evidence doesn't talk about like a single accord that has been made between the I, mean, I, I tell you, like Israel, Egypt, Egypt, Lebanon, like Israel and Lebanon literally passed. They've been passed, talking. They know Israel and Lebanon literally passed the maritime agreement two months ago. That's like they, brand new in Grand Cross. I mean, I, 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 said, I, said, I said Israel, that's Egypt, fine. Lebanon are all cooperating right now. Yeah, but say that. You asked for an agreement, like it. We've used. We have 30 questions. We have, no, we have, we have two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to start with I'm just going to start on the weighing my case, their case. I'm going to 
start the lane. We see there's always an incentive. There's always intervening actors for things like war and arm sales because every single actor has the incentive to look at things like that too because they want to prevent war. But we see that human trafficking is invisible for the evidence from faith that finds that there's literally no judicial interview, which is why you should look at it first. First, they say that there's no inter intervention with arm sales. Yes, there is. Policymakers always have the incentive to look at things like war and military interventions, which is why they always do so. They say arm sales cost trafficking. They've conceded that this is still through the lens of magnitude and war, which policymakers always solve for. Then they say that GC cooperation solves. It's never done so in the past. They have no incentive to cooperate on human trafficking specifically. If they win their co opting, they'll just do things like military cooperation, which is why it's never worked in the past. It's a bloody analytic. <clears throat> At that point, go to our case. The arguments, for example, Lawrence finds that the U.S. is decreasing military presence in West Asia, which is why Zuman finds that U.S. diplomacy is tied to hard power, whose model finds that re engagement increases the demand for security contractors, uh, which undermines diplomatic efforts and increases things like gender violence because security contractors have no judicial interview, uh, no judicial overview, and can do things like human trafficking without being called for, uh, called out. Then they say, uh, they give you two responses. First, they say that historically they just relocate troops and go into West Asia. One, that extrapolation wasn't in rebuttal, but two, there's literally no evidence or evidence from case finds that right now the U.S. Just pulling out completely, not relocating. Then they say that uh, we decrease military, which is better for human trafficking. This extended through anti stream and evidence for case finds that diplomacy is inherently tied to hard power, and any other opinions are wishful thinking and false or evidence is horrible and does not say what they say it says. At that point, you're cleanly voting on trafficking because they continue that you have to look at it first and prioritize it. Go to their case. First, the impact extension is word for word. Miscalculation causes a global famine. That's not an impact. Don't grant them uh, any sort of offense. Then, on regionalism, they really mishandle the link debate. First, they fully conceded in the last speech that when the U.S. is in the region, every country can rely on the U.S. and they're bearing the hatchet with each other, which is why there's always tensions. But when the U.S. pulls out, they're doing things like talk. They just say that it's talks, but our evidence says that, for example, Egypt and Israel have started uh, negotiations for the first time in like decades, which we see is the only risk of solvency for anything that they talk about. Their evidence about the U.S. being able to solve for anything is all wishful thinking and has never worked in the past. Prepare uh, the actual uniqueness, which just proves the entirety of their argument. <laughs> On GCC, the Bernstein evidence indicates the explaining the influence of Russia and China to weaken the GCC. Bernstein indicates a relation that failed due to lack of open dialogue, which why Dorsey finds an orange supreme in the status quo. Bernstein indicates an increased US diplomatic effort to solve the GCC by helping create honest open dialogue and diplomatic engagement. Regional conflict helps regional organizations that dialogue. No finds that only GCC can run the arms race through coordinated arms agreements. The impact is what well. Kibler finds that arms race create instability and encourages conflict. Toronto finds the conditions for an arms race are present inside of the Middle East. Avery finds that Pakistan, China, and Russia will get involved in this calculus cause global famine. They say that there's no impact extension. No or Gibbler evidence indicates that arms races cause massive instability, which drive things like miscalculation with the Avery evidence indicates drive, drive Pakistan, China, and Russia to get involved inside of the scenario. Secondly, we're winning the best link to do into the trapping debate. They try to say that co-op has happened since the U.S. has gone out. They don't read an example when we ask them to uh, ask them to until final. That is way too late. Then their example they give is Egypt, Israel. These people have had peace treaties since the 70s. And they've always had good relations. But secondly, they have conceded that negotiations are not the same thing as concrete action. And so far as they have dropped that an arms race is happening in the status quo, we're winning the unique debate on GC State. Uh, finally, they say that it forces countries to rely on the U.S. This way was not in summary. B, they do not extend a war insofar as they drop the currency down, which indicates an empirically increased diplomatic efforts for regional cooperation. Go to the link here. Our Lincoln says that when you have regional conflict for the GCC impact scenario, that forces more boots on the ground, more troops because you're inside of a war, which they have dropped outweighs them on scope because now thousands of troops are getting deployed and sent to a couple of diplomats. Their response is that uh, their response is that one intervening actor solved. A, they don't tell you what intervening actors are solving for the GCC, but B, they can see that this is obviously not working insofar as the arms race is happening in the status quo. Second, they say that policymakers always prioritize our impact. It doesn't matter insofar as we're analyzing tra uh, trapping the lens of our Lincoln, which is that boots on the ground means more trapping at that point, winning the trapping debate. Uh, let's go to their case. Extend that uh, our analysis, Alex's analysis of the policy shift is game over. Even if diplomats require security, it doesn't matter because our holistic policy shifts away from military points. Their response that Steinman indicates wishful thinking, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's talking about counter terror operations, but secondly, extend the argument that a trade off, their response at the end of the day is that there's no evidence. They have conceded that we go inside of uh, West Asia, we just pull them from East Asia, which means that no matter what, the troops just get relocated, trapping is on
can I see a couple cards? I'm not sure if they've already been sent, but someone can point me in the right direction on the email chain or they can be resent. Uh, Judge, sorry, the computer audio is off sometimes. Oh, thank you. Good now. Can I see a couple cards or can someone point me in the right direction on the email chain? Yeah. Okay, on the neg, um, the card that's read on the Gulf Cooperation contention that I think is just the uniqueness card you apply about. No, okay, let me read it. Okay. Maybe type in the email chain so that we can send you the card. Yes, I'll type it in the email chain. Okay, thank you. We're sending the card right now. We just, just sent it. the three pieces of evidence that we wrote on their case about. Oh, actually. I think you summarized too. I think she. No, there's one more. Yeah. Oh, she did. I get it. It falls to zero. Thirty minutes. Oh, wait, parents are all the Yeah, uh, actually, I just checked. Uh, next round starts at twelve fifteen. Uh, 
A ver.